Witch craft to me is all about finding myself, being true to myself, connecting with nature. It's all about balance and harmony. When I was younger, I loved to play all about the Salem witch trials. There's an amazing play out there and there's like movies and it's very, very big. The Salem witch trials was tiny. Where my family lived, there always seemed to be witch trials. So I started looking into that and what I did find absolutely shocked me. I practice witchcraft through rituals. I will perform rituals nearly every day. Part of that is like casting a circle, um, maybe doing some spell work. Some of the tools that I use is incense, I use wand, I use bowls, which represent the earth and water. I would use the wand in the salt while I was opening a circle. And it's basically I'm blessing and making the space that I'm using sacred. A pentacle represents earth, air, fire, water and spirit. And that's where you get your five points. I have been commented at a lot of people thinking it was like devil worshipping. It's amazing how many people still believe that, who maybe practice different kinds of religions. I don't believe in the devil. The devil's a Christian concept. So anyone who's into witchcraft, don't do devil worshipping because you know, it's the devil that belongs to the Christians, it doesn't belong to anyone who's into Wiccan witchcraft. Scotland is abnormal in the number of witches it executes per capita of population. It's about five times the European average. Something that I think over the last few years has become more visible publicly is the thing that's now known as the Witches' Well on, the, uh, on, on Castle Hill. So, but the, the Witches' Well was put there in 18, I think there's something like 1894, uh, as an earlier attempt to commemorate the witches because it was known that that was the largest single place where witches were executed. Most of the witches were executed in their own locality, but if they were brought to trial in Edinburgh, then Edinburgh was where they would be executed. The Witchcraft Act in Scotland was passed in 1563, so this is just a few years after the Scottish Reformation, so this is a time when Scotland has become aggressively Protestant instead of Catholic. Each side wants to prove that it's more godly than the other one. And one of the ways of proving that you're godly, one of the ways of just trying to be more godly is actually to deal with the ungodliness. And one of the ways they do that is by looking for witches. Maybe I should say a bit about the two main ideas that they have about what a witch is. The, what you might call the peasant idea and the elite or intellectual or demonological idea. So the peasant idea focuses on neighbours and harmful magic and the idea that a person has harmed their neighbours by magic. They tend to assume that that's a woman because they're more afraid of women's curses. It's not that women necessarily do curse more, but people sit up and take notice more because it's a sort of stereotypical idea that if a woman is angry, what she'll do is she'll use harmful magic. But there's never a rule that it has to be women. Men could, you know, exercise harmful magic and sometimes they're perceived to have done so. So that's the peasant idea. The elite idea is the idea of someone who has made a pact with the devil. A witch is someone who is in league with the devil, who in modern terms has sold their soul to the devil. It would have been in absolutely horrendous conditions that these people would have had to have lived in. You can just imagine the fear that these men and women had to live through, knowing that they just didn't smile the right way to a neighbour. They could potentially be accused of being a witch. And I don't even know if they would have called themselves a witch. This was something that King James decided that women here should be called. I would imagine that everyone would have been terrified. There's a panic 
breaks out in 1590. King James VI has just come back from Denmark with his new bride, Anne of Denmark. There's a suggestion that witches might have interfered with their voyages across the North Sea. It starts to look plausible and the first people who are brought in and questioned about this start to give answers which suggests that there is a conspiracy and that it's a conspiracy aimed at the king and the queen. But as the story of this conspiracy was pieced together, one of the central events in this conspiracy came to be perceived by the interrogators that there had been a convention of witches, a meeting of witches with the devil in the church of North Berwick on Halloween of 1590. So this goes on for 150 or so years. The, the last panic where there are significant numbers of executions is in 1697 in Paisley, west of Scotland. And witches are perceived to have bewitched this 11-year-old girl, Christian Shaw, who's the daughter of a laird. Her father is in a good position to get people arrested, interrogated, and so on. And there are seven executions in Paisley as a result of this. It was a time of extreme unrest. In Scotland, we had the witch trials that cleared a lot of men and women. And then, of course, not long after that, there was the Highland clearances as well. So, you know, I think it was definitely came down to a Scotland-England thing.